The fall of the Ptolemaic Kingdom was nearly complete, with some even having strange memories of them being defeated in a great battle already. Eastern Africa was now securely in the coalition's grip, and attention was turned to the west, to Carthage. In Asia, a purge of the so-called Mages of the Steppe had delighted the chosen king, while most others weren't sure what exactly it had achieved. Europe was still a hotbed of wars, but more and more coalition armies were arriving to stamp Armenian authority across the region. Never have I wanted to go back to Armenia more, but never have our orders asked so much of us. The Chosen King wants us to end the wars in Europa and establish the terms for tribute and entry to the coalition for all these petty kingdoms. But was it really the Chosen King who ordered this? Or was it one of his duplicates? I saw one of them face to face. The face, the voice, the body are all that of the mysterious man. But he claimed to be a mere servant of the true king. You'd think it was a practical joke being played on me. But my family has sent word of similar men at court back home. All these sicknesses, all these strange memories, and now this. My wife says that we must flee to the outer fiefs and quit politics. I'd do it in a heartbeat if a king copy wouldn't be sent to drag me back into the madness. So what is there left to do but fight? And pray that Ahura Mazda concludes her grand play before the world crumbles, heavens unto earth and earth unto the void. Hello there and welcome back to Wings of Eden. I'm currently in the middle of helping our ally Macedonian Koinon take some random Illyrian town. I figured they wouldn't be able to do it without me, but actually they've somewhat achieved victory themselves. I just walked up to the wall and started shooting arrows in to support them, and they just about came out on top, albeit with massive casualties and no real strategy applied. The battle went on for ages because some spears were alive at the back. We went off to kill them, but it was slow work. We couldn't get in through the gate properly. They were like a couple of routing guys keeping half of our men from moving through properly. Or maybe it was the floating corpses that were spooking them off. At some point, some brave archer decides to finally take down the last enemy defending the gate. And now we can actually enter the enemy city. An amphora of wine for him. Anyway, victory was achieved and our ally actually survived. I thought they'd be totally wiped out there. This battle was quite handy for us actually because afterwards Macedonian Koinon occupy the city and before they were our client state but they were kicked out of being our client state because they lost all their territory. Now they've got some territory again so we can actually go and ask them to be our client state or a puppet state and they're willing to do it. We don't even have to give them any money or anything. We could probably ask money from them but I'm not going to bother. Now we've got a really good base here to use in Illyria, finally some friendly territory where we can recruit levied units and replenish easily, that's all good. And the Illyrians, the Bruki are pretty much dead at this point, just need to finish them off. We've also got another win to pick up and another puppet state to pick up, far away with the Pontic Nobles, the clone army that I was sending north to defend against potential rebellions out in Sarmatia, stumbles across the hostile Pontic Nobles and absolutely annihilates them, and we have the option to subjugate, so there we go, an instant puppet state for us. And yes, after that, this Cav army moves on to go patrol the steppe and make sure no rebellions occur, and we are actually going to need them out there later on. We enter a new war against the Veneti when they decide to declare war on Massilia. Not a good idea, so that's more of the barbarians for us to bring down over there. But we're going to focus on the bigger fish to fry for now. It's finally time to actually push into Carthage. The crew has been besieging Chirone for a long time, and finally, with Manua Capi arriving with reinforcements, it's time to go. The balance bar was pretty far in our favour, I expected the enemy to have more power here, but it looks like they've been slightly killed by starvation. Because I wanted to have a challenging battle to kickstart our war with Carthage, I'm going to give myself the arbitrary rule of trying not to use Manua Capi's army, since we don't really need it by the looks of things. I even tried to move it away so it wouldn't be there. 
but they're out of movement points, and I don't want to wait another turn, otherwise it will just get even easier. So let's go into the attack. I inadvertently gave myself some extra challenge by apparently only building four rams and two siege towers. Having four rams is kind of pointless, there's a maximum of two gates we can reasonably attack given our deployment zone options, and two siege towers means we don't have very much leeway to get onto the walls, so I'm going to send one from the west and one from the east to make sure we still have two points of entry, and they'll just have to suffice. At the same time, we can start hitting the enemy with arrows to soften them up, not really doing all that much damage, while the rams gradually edge up to the gates. Inside, the enemy have a couple of units of elephants and they decided to send some of them out of the city to take a look at us. I thought, fine, we'll start hitting them with our archers, <laughs> and the ram is just going to sneak by beside them. The ram does make it up to the gates, they're being bombarded by jabs from up on the wall, but they're a heavy infantry unit with good armour that can sustain such attacks. My fire arrows are not doing very much to these elephants. I'm using fire arrows because they supposedly give you a bonus against elephants, but not sure it had any particular effect. We didn't kill any of them. And then they turn their attention to my ramming crew. They charge into these heavy imp and absolutely annihilate them. Three quarters of the unit are killed in seconds, and that's the end of that. And that's probably a very powerful unit lost as well. If it had been levies, they probably would have died even faster, if that's at all possible. My ram's now blocking the gate, but the elephants can sort of phase through it, and they're going to use that ability to sneak back into the town and avoid the rest of my arrows. There's my Noakapi's army on the other side of the map. Just going to set them up in the corner for now. They do need to be away from the beach, since the enemy have a catapult ship just hanging around out here. Need to make sure they don't have anything they can hit. A little bit later, I moved up some spearmen to take control of the ram and try to get things going again, since the spears will have a bonus against the elephants. But the elephants didn't come back out this time, so we are going to be able to safely ram the nothing that will eventually cause the gates to be destroyed. And also my siege tower in the west is just about to set up, so all we need to do now is wait for an attack to become available over there. And in the east, things have already gone successfully. We're into the town, there's no one defending the eastern part of the city, so one victory point will quickly be ours, and a couple more units will eventually make their way over to support as well. Should have known they'd set their beasts of war against us while they cowered behind their walls, staining their lily livers with that desert folk swill they suckled day and night. <laughs> Reminds me of that letter I got. Who was it? Some Roman calling me the pup suckling at the chosen king's teat. Where is that crazy old wizard anyway? Gonna show up later pretending he did all the work, I bet. No wonder I'm getting letters begging me to take his life. Artaxius chose the king, the king me, and now I have to make a little choice off for myself. Thing is, what kind of curse would it be to plunge a dagger into that lump of dark magic we call the king? Folks say he can see the future and knows all of the past, so he knows what choice I've got and what decision I'll make. Is that why he ain't showing up? <laughs> or he just a lazy ward of a sword who don't get out of bed for anything less than a palace made of solid gold? <laughs> Heavens, I don't rightly know. Wonder if anyone else thinks this whole thing's gotten a little too crazy these days. While the enemy did send some cavalry to resist our attack from the east, we were quickly able to defeat them using our hypaspist spears. However, then one of their elephant units came over to join the fight. Since I have the spears right here, we can just press them against the elephants and hope to drive them away, while the sword infantry deal with the enemy's supporting troops, who weren't very willing to fight, this unit of jabs just routed as I ran at them, so we'll leave that going for a bit. In the west, we've just got a big grind going on. My troops who went up the siege tower are currently engaged with the enemy's infantry, and in the gatehouse we're not making very much progress. A couple of elephants standing around and more enemy infantry mean that not much is going on, and gradually both sides are being depleted in numbers, but very slowly. We were able to open their second gate, however, and the troops there will now be free agents to go rear attack that whole situation. Back over to the east then, my battle against the elephants wasn't going very well. Even though they're just standing there, the Hypaspis spears were just getting thrown about by them and seemed unable to attack them. We might have brought down one or two of them, but overall, we're just getting absolutely annihilated. 
this wasn't what I expected, especially because Hypaspis Spears are a tier 3 elite spear unit, and elephants are supposed to have some weaknesses, those particularly being javelins and spear units. But it's not happening right here, our spears are getting trashed. The swordsmen have gone to attack some nearby infantry, and after our spears retreat the elephants turn around, and now they can trash the swords as well. Didn't get much of a charge, but again just this static fight will go fine for them, they're throwing our heavy infantry about. Very quickly they're considering routing, probably the right idea because they are all going to die very fast. My remaining infantry are going to get out of there and the attack from the east is now deemed a failure just because of those elephants. I was so worried by them that I actually deployed the archers from Anua Kapi's army, breaking my own soft rules. But if it's any consolation, they completely glitched out going up our one tower, and it just didn't really happen. After several minutes, enough of them got up there that they could start shooting down. Some of the enemy infantry chased my remaining swords over to the wall, and the archers could then put some arrows onto them. The rest of the infantry and the elephant stayed by the victory point, however, just defending it, and I didn't make any further attempts at attacking, since things are obviously going to be pretty difficult getting through those elephants with just about anything. Now we're going to focus back on the west, then. My free agent troops have tried a rear attack, but the enemy broke some troops away to turn around and face them, so we haven't really got any good routes going here. We did, though, route the elephant, so that's cleared up some space. The battle against the infantry will just be a slow grind, then. Nothing much to report on there. Here we are, some time later, after I broke through a little bit and routed a couple of units. Now we can finally start surrounding them properly. I'm pulling out my exhausted frontline units to try and cycle in reserves. Always difficult in Attila, but it went somewhat successfully there. We've also moved all of the out of ammunition archers to go capture another victory point using the second gate. And while they were there, they were attacked by the enemy commander and his sacred band spears. I didn't even notice this while playing, but it was fine in the end. The enemy are tired and we're fresh, and that just makes such a huge difference that even a top tier melee unit against a bottom tier melee unit like archers in melee is somehow a bad matchup. We just win in the melee and the enemy are forced to retreat after losing loads of troops and they rout. And that's going to signal the end of the battle really, with the general routing, everything else that's left starts routing as well. And all of a sudden, we win. So it was good that our archers are so good in melee. Not quite sure how, we've seen that a couple of times in the series so far. Fresh archers are just surprisingly powerful. This means we don't have to deal with those elephants back over in the east, they're going to rout away. The battle isn't actually over because there was this one unit of spearmen that sat on one of the other gates and just wouldn't rout. It took me several minutes to actually inflict a couple of kills on them in order to end the battle. So let's skip over that, let's just presume I won. Here's the result, we lost only one unit in the end, that was the unit of swords that fought the elephants in the east and just got completely destroyed trying to retreat. But we did also clear out the enemy army, you can see there the kills on those elephants, they were pretty good. And for a free garrison unit as well, that's not bad, we could do with having a few of those. There we go, then we've made the capture, need to immediately give it to someone else of course, and we'll be giving it to the Egyptian nobles in this case, we're going to let them control Libya since they've already started controlling it. Now let's move on to another battle that sort of already happened in an old timeline, this is Naram Suen taking Cyprus again. As I mentioned, I didn't want to redo this fight, so I've just left this place under siege for the last 10 turns or so and whittled the enemy down. However, we did lose two units of cataphracts doing that really one-sided auto-resolve, which massively sucks, especially in this challenge run, because we'll have to walk all the way back to Armenia to get those units again. We're obviously not going to bother with that, so we'll just rely on picking up random levied units or mercenaries to fill in the gaps. Now, Naram Surin can start sailing out. We're going to bring him down to take part in the offensive against Carthage, if he can catch up. Now here's a very special bit of footage for this campaign. I'm building a building. This hasn't happened since the beginning of the campaign. I finally unlocked a new building slot and I'm going to make a food producing building here. I could upgrade buildings in the places I already have, but I just can't because of the food supply, the whole Attila economy ground itself to a halt very early on, so yes, now I have the chance to build something else, that's exciting, and if you're interested, that's what our tech tree currently looks like, I'm focusing on military techs, because if we get 20, that will achieve one of our victory conditions. Now back to the war, we're ready to move on, but Manua Kapi has no supplies with his army, which gives you some pretty big debuffs. 
Not quite sure still how to get supplies, <laughs> the uh, mystery continues, but I know that attacking enemies sometimes gets you supplies, for example that's why Bakru has supplies, he just won that battle. So I want Manu Akapi to lead the attack, but he's also debuffed so that makes that a bad idea, it's a bit of a conundrum and you can't move supplies between armies or anything, so we'll just have to do what we can with that. The thing is, I can't sleep at night, your men grumble so loud, and I'm not even in the same camp. <laughs> you gotta send your wagons back over to me, and we'll divide the disgusting mess that passed for provisions back in Karene. Forget about that. I have concerns of more pressing than mortal business. I thought you'd say that. Listen, what do you think about General Naram Suen? I think he's a paid man who does what you pay for who could really do with being shown how to let go of his damn men. Would you say that he is your rival? I would not say that, but I gather you are about to explain why I am as wrong as a Roman. No, I just think he is a very special man. Touching, but that ain't military talk, you know. I think that it would be such a shame to lose his martial spirit to the rigors of time. I think... I think I will make his soul immortal. Kind and generous of you, O oh wise king. His body, however, it will not survive the ritual. But I suppose once it is done, he can take any body I offer him. Yes, he shall be the perfect running dog and the perfect lion to tear down my enemies from here until the end of time. Sounds like you've got quite the relationship, my king. Don't forget about getting food now. Mortal business calls ever louder these days. We're almost done moving our way through Illyria and generally pacifying it. We're starting now to move towards Italy with our Siuca, laying siege to this random place. Most of Italy is controlled right now by miscellaneous German and Celtic factions. The Romans have just been obliterated and now only exist in Iberia as our puppet state, as it happens. So no need to worry about them. Just need to finish off a few survivors in this area before we really commit to that. And our allies and clone forces will soon get that sorted. At the start of the next turn, there's various bits of news I wanted to take a look at. We've had a governor die, that doesn't really matter though. Someone is trying to give themselves a promotion and I can't stop them because the technical faction leader that we have, our queen, who I think might have been the wife of Artaxius or something, or maybe it's the queen of the Medes who's technically our queen as well, something like that. She has no influence so she can't stop anything from happening, which is an issue right now that's about to come up in a bigger way. We bribe Bakru to stop him from betraying us. Then there's news of a death. The guy who died was none other than Naram Suum, the general I was bringing over to help with our Carthaginian campaign. He died because he apparently was trying to kill Manuakapi's wife and said wife killed him. We could have prevented everything from happening, but because Ahuna has no influence, we just can't intervene in political events at all. So now we've lost one of our main generals. That's pretty annoying. Manuakapi's wife's loyalty drops as a result of us not helping her very much, but I don't think that does anything. I'm pretty sure the loyalty of the female characters doesn't impact anything in any way. Not that I really investigated at all. You can see Bakru is still on the verge of rebellion. He's not really happy with the whole situation. The new guy who's replacing Naram Suen is so generic he doesn't even get a portrait on his unit card. It's just some guy. Manuakapi is trying to get supplies by raiding enemy territory. Thought that might help, but it doesn't, long story short. I'm going to give up on that there. And next turn we'll be in position to attack the Carthaginians and perhaps steal some supplies from them. Ah, my darling wife, I trust you have brought Naram to dinner as planned? Well? Oh, what is this? This silent treatment? What happened to Naram? Is he dead? Where is he? He is here. What? I'm sorry. The spell had already triggered by the time he landed. You were too powerful, my love. His soul has been freed? Made immortal? I don't think you're seeing the issue here. The general has been absorbed into me. Soon I will cease to exist 
and his mind will take over. I'm sorry, my love. So, it really does work. The vote to immortality. I shall have my eternal servant, Invincible, alive to witness all the wars of history and become an unstoppable warrior. What would you have me do, my love? Oh, nothing at all, dear. You have done well. You are a host to a great spirit now. Never has anyone been so close to Pandora as to possess the essence of two souls. As they merge, you will morph into a most powerful being. More souls will come, and you will soon be a handmaiden of Pandora, and the right hand of the Chosen King. I've never been so happy, my love. Yes, yes, I feel so powerful. But something is missing. Bring me spines! <laughs> Before the late Naramsuram's force could reach land, it was attacked by a Carthaginian army in transport ships. This is an auto resolve, but for some reason, I decided to retreat and just ignore them. Then they followed me and attacked me again, so I thought, well, we're going to have to do this battle. I decided to do it manually, not only because naval fights are rare, but because I believed that balance bar was going to be quite incorrect when it came to the actual fight. That is the case, but not really for the reasons that I expected, actually. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a highlight reel of this very strange naval battle that ensued. Problem number one we face is that most of the enemy units aren't actually in transports. They're in actual naval unit ships. That means they're fast and they can't be set on fire. Not completely. You could, in theory, set them on fire, but they regen fire health, so realistically you can't do it, whereas our transports can very, very easily be set on fire, setting us at quite a large disadvantage, especially against a force with so many archers in it. You might think we just need to get in close and board them to negate this threat, but it's not that easy for a couple of reasons. One reason is that these ships can quite easily turn around and sail away because they're more maneuverable than transports, so we do get forced to take many more fire arrows than expected, and we are going to lose ships to this, including this one right here. We're just being spammed, the ship sets on fire, and all the men on it are gone. Luckily, because the units spread across three ships, the entire unit isn't gone, they can still fight. And the second reason this is going to be difficult is, well, what you can see happening here. When my men do board the enemy ships, some kind of mysterious force seems to come into play, and our men are just killed. Looks like the enemy are being killed by it as well. Everybody's just dying, and that's going to favour the enemy, because if we had just been fighting archers with our heavy infantry, we probably wouldn't have lost anyone. So that means it's extra hard to board these ships and take the crews out. We're taking huge casualties. The battle itself just degenerates into a huge mess, no strategy whatsoever, can't really tell what's going on, so just wanted to show you a couple of interesting things that happened amid the chaos. Here, we spotted one guy hanging out on one of our ships, surrounded by the enemy, but they don't dare strike him down. He's clearly daring them to do it, but no, they just won't, so he is a particularly revered member of our force. You can see fire arrows are landing on this ship. It's because my fire archers are trying to shoot the enemy crew. It targets crews rather than the ships they're on when you attack units. So if the enemy are on your ships, your fire arrows go for your ships, and that can be a problem. Over here, here's another example of a strike team trying to clear out the decks of enemy archers and just being struck down by something or other. I thought maybe they're being hit by missiles of some kind. There are a few missiles coming into the scene, but it doesn't look like it explains why they all died. And with that unit, their ship just sunk in sheer outrage after all the men perished. It wasn't going to hang around to witness this disgrace. As you can see, my men eventually set my own ship on fire. This is the ship with that one guy on it. And the one guy who did survive the enemy attack is forced to swim for it, so he will perish eventually, unfortunately. The only upside to this is that now that the enemy are back on their own ships, our men can start hitting enemy targets. And because a few of the enemy units actually are on regular transport ships, like those heavy infantry there, we can easily take them out. As for the rest of the fight, we are winning. You can see on the balance bar we've got the advantage. It's just coming at a massive cost. 
Here's another example of us trying to jump onto an enemy deck and kill them all, this time with a different unit. I thought maybe these guys would have better luck. They are slightly better than our Romanized infantry, but they too are being cut down mysteriously as they hit the enemy ship. In this case, the enemy ship surrendered, so we didn't lose the entire unit to this strange effect. We got away with it, and that's going to be the pattern for the rest of the battle. While it seems ridiculously hard to bring the enemy down, their morale is low, so we just have to get near them and they'll give up in most cases. Plus, our fire arrows will deal with all of their heavier units since they're on those transports. It came down to just fighting against their general, who was on his own, Having the uh, same blessing as our soldier back over on that other ship, our men just won't strike at him, and it's actually baiting our fire arrows to come in and hit our own ships once again. Here some regular archers are trying to get the shot, they just can't quite do it. On the right there is the general's bodyguard unit. The rest of his men are not on the same ship, so that's sort of glitching things out. And this boat with no one on it is also apparently associated with him, and we managed to set that one on fire, doing nothing but perhaps intimidating the enemy a little bit. After a very long time, he actually did die, or I think he routed and then was killed immediately by my men, and that brings the battle finally to an end. Only a close victory, we did get very heavily punished there. Luckily only one full unit died because of the effect I mentioned where when ships go down, you're not losing the whole unit. So lots of units have lost loads of their men, but the army's alive. If it can get back to land and replenish, we'll be able to recover from that strange naval battle, and the enemy, hopefully, won't. We'll be pressing against them on land, hopefully with better luck next time. That is it for now, thank you very much for watching, and special thanks to all officially Devon patrons. Europe will begin to crumble, but Carthage actually turn out to be pretty powerful in the next episode of Wings of Eden.